was born in 1920, and uh, I have a picture, of, I think it was about the first picture that was made of me, and it looks lo almost like the same chair that Lee was sitting in when he had his made and in Concord. And I don't really remember exactly who the photographer was, but he had a, a place up over one of the buildings on Main Street of Concord is where they had them. And then the one when I was about four or five years old was made over across the railroad track when where my, one of my brothers lived. And it was a dirt street, of course. Your mama's brother. Yeah, brother. And so uh, they made uh, that picture. And I wore my hair like that with the bangs across here for many, many years. And of course, I uh, went to old field schools and he you didn't think about being riding. I remember one time my dad taking us on a sled about halfway to, to the school. He said, now you can get up and walk the rest of the way. <laughs> and we right. had, that's the only time I remember him taking us. I know, we had to get there the best way we could. Anyway, we walked through there, just little children, and through a long patch of woods and finally become a path through there. But we walked on over to where the old house that we lived in it later. And we waited there always on uh, two of our neighbor children. And we almost became late one tardy if you were late getting to school. Well, as we got near the school, we could hear the, the bell ringing. We about ran our legs off. <laughs> if you got on the gr school ground, you weren't counted tardy. But we didn't like it a little bit because we had to wait on. Mama said, I don't see why you don't go off and leave them. And I guess that's what we should have, have done. But you get to school and it's a big old uh, stove there. It wasn't a pot belly type, but it was a long one, kind of flat like. But by the time you got there, your toes were just about like ice. And nobody came there early to start the fire. And by the time it got heated up good, it was time to go home. <laughs> and you'd think kind of get thawed out, but by the yeah. time you got back home, it was cold again. <laughs> but uh, I went to school there to St. John's till I was in about the sixth grade, I think it was, and that transferred to Mount Pleasant, because then they started school where you were only getting six months school, and you had to have eight months school if you got promoted. <laughs> so Mom and Daddy decided to uh, just to let us uh, catch the bus and go to Mount Pleasant and get the other. So uh, therefore, I got ahead, and I guess Evelyn did too, ahead of the ones that were in our classes like that. But uh, then uh, we never did go back to the old field schools then. And it was called Old Field? Oh, they were Old Field Schools. Mm -hmm. well, you're saying plural, schools as in more than one or? Well, it's in a, a commu different communities. Oh, okay. Uh, and the uh, one school had for two, just two, two rooms. Just two rooms. Right. And it stayed there for many years and then it caught fire and they not exactly know how that it burned, but they had an inkling that of what it was, but there was no electricity in there, so it had to be set on fire, really. Yeah. They, they seemed to think it was by some of the neighbor boys that... Uh, Didn't want to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they were all out of school. All out of school. It was Just mischievous. Yeah. Uh-huh, I think so. But anyway, I went to Mount Pleasant School, and I got into the uh, 10th grade, I think, because it was only 11 grades at that time. And so I let stop school and got married then, uh, after I, met, I had met at Archie mm -hmm. at a party uh, one night and we always told each other that when we saw each other we knew that was a person that we wanted to be our partner and he always told me that and he said I always always said I was the only girl he ever loved and I, I really he was firm in it and I really felt like it was because he was a very good husband and dad he certainly was but we had a wonderful life together and he farmed, we farmed for many years and where we lived at one time by Mr. Safer, he stopped, said he just believed he'd stop having a farm, uh, worked, the ground worked and so he started in the, in the mill, working in the mill and I think it was about 1939 or 40, somewhere along there and then he worked in cannon mills until he retired and then we built our home where we are now in uh, 1950, we built there the first Saturday, I think it was, in September of in 1950. And we just had just four rooms, and of course nobody had a bathroom. You had a little house out behind the big house, you know. Yeah. And we didn't have power, well we had power when we moved up there, but we did not have a, have a bathroom. 
but Archie thought that was better than sliced bread and having the breast in the, in the house. But, uh, uh, and we had a, an old hand pump in the well, and of course you beat it up and tie it down, it always had like rust or something come out. So finally when uh, Barb and Troy built them next to us, so it was just run you a, a water down there and put it underground under the garden. Yeah. And it's what they did. So we thoroughly enjoyed having that. But as I told many think people, uh, I worked in the mill, well, the hoser mill, a few uh, months one summer. And when they laid me off, I had been staying home and, and being a housewife and, and mother at home. And when I come in and told Archie, he said, I don't care if you never work out another day. He said, as long as you stay here and cook me some good meals <laughs> and, and make what you can sewing, I am a happy person. <laughs> so that was the last of my work out. And I, it, I had been doing some sewing. It just got, I really just got started by accident. So that's all that I really have known. But I've been had such a wonderful opportunity of being involved in so many activities to the church and the community, which has been fun. But I have pictures here of uh, Archie and myself when we were first married, and then, of course, as the children came along, while we were there on the pictures then. But I did not drive, start driving. I think I was uh, 55 years old or something like that when I started driving. Why did you wait so long? Why did you have a need? A, we didn't have an automobile. Oh, that's a good reason. My husband never had never had any driver's license. I did all the driving. He always said he couldn't pass uh, a test if you go and I said, I think you can. Well, I just don't think I can. And he said, you're too good a driver. I just don't want to uh, do that, which I didn't think that was. But I appreciated the thought, you know, saying that. But I, I traveled quite a bit, not ex it's really extensively. I did drive from the Tennessee and I think to South Carolina then and I finally got about all over the state of North Carolina I think but it was really uh, nice to get out. He loved to go and hunt up the uh, people that he worked with on Sunday afternoon. We toured all over uh, Stanley County and uh, I don't know other counties trying to find person that he worked with if I didn't and once in a while I just get tired I say oh let's just don't go this afternoon I'm tired let's just stay at home <laughs> but he had the biggest pride in finding the people he worked with and now he finally worked he worked on the second shift until a few years before he passed away and uh, so we just kind of quit going at, you know toward the last uh, see if I did but I, we celebrated our 25th anniversary with a good with a party on that, and I don't know we thought we wouldn't live much longer. The reason we get to the 50th year, I don't know what, why we did, but anyway, the girls wanted to do that, and then we celebrated our 50th uh, wedding anniversary in uh, October, and he died then, had a heart attack on March the 5th, and I was in the hospital a while, and then we brought him home, and so they taught me how to. Uh, feed him through the tube, and, and I did that at home every six hours, and so then he lived till uh, the 5th of June, exactly that many months, from March to June. What year? 1986. 86. Yes. So, uh, I really became involved in many more activities of the church, community, and traveling quite a bit. He wanted to, but the last couple of years he didn't really feel all that good and he just felt like he didn't want to but we had the two children Robert and Joyce who was the oldest and she she was about five and a half year, years older than, than Janice and Joyce and so I, well, I told a lot of people we didn't all have a whole lot but we were happy and that was the main thing because I, like I said I didn't work out and pay was so, such a little bit the first week he worked in the mill he made $17 and he always said, I'm going to buy me a radio when I get paid. And that's what he did. And it's a little box radio, just about that big. And it's a log house we lived in, and much of a big ledge, you know, with the windows there. But he added just a little extension to it, the front of it, where the little radio would sit right there in that window. We enjoyed that thing immensely. We did. Now, you hadn't mentioned that you lived in a log house. Uh, yes, when before we moved, built, uh, built a house. 
built our home. In the 50s. Uh, yes, we moved there uh, sometime in the later 40s. I don't mm -hmm. know just when it was, but we lived there until uh, 1950, I think it was. Okay. Is what we did. Barbara was born in 39, wasn't she? Yeah, she was born. The, and you were living there before that? Yeah, I guess it was. It was sometime then. Mm -hmm. uh, we, well, well, we been in the late 30s. Mm -hmm. That's right. When you moved That's there. right. But uh, Joyce was five and a half months, I mean, years younger than her. But she was born in the hospital, is where she was born. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, there's a lot of pictures up here of the family with me and Lee and uh, Evelyn and Betty and Margie all together because we were, well the four of us girls was born in the same house across the road from where we lived and my dad gave those of us that wanted part of the uh, place to build and so uh, Margie and uh, Evelyn and myself lived there and Betty and Hugh had a lot over where, uh, Hugh's from Hugh's family and they moved at Watts, built it over at Watts Crossroads over there then. But Lee wanted to farm so that's what they did. They helped him some on the spot. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah. Well, that's good. But I think my husband had more fun with people, and he could laugh, and then he'd get, he'd <laughs> something like that is what he would do. So when he'd get started laughing, he'd get everybody else tickled, and everybody else would begin laughing too at him, at him the way he would laugh. Because I'll never forget him. He would come and he'd say, can you lower my ears? You want a haircut? <laughs> you should say ears. It was always lower yeah. my ears. Can you lower my ears? <laughs> and with joy, with him, he was always singing his little bundle of joy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. He sung to Barbara and Joyce, and they was in third or fourth grade when they started the school. They well, didn't care a turn in a bucket. No, he <laughs> That's the truth. There's seven children in that family, and he and not a one of them could carry a tune. And Barbara said, I think I know why, because they were never sung to. And of course, after he married in my family, my, we were all like to sing, and, and uh, I played piano some by ear for a while, but I haven't practiced so long until I'm just about past, I mean, don't know how to do it even anymore. One of the things I did many times, and I started doing it quite by accident, of a member of the Grange, we had contest, and I was the head of the, uh, the committee that was doing it. So whatever, uh, I was in something, I was gonna have a part of it. I always like to do that. Well, I just wondered, well, what am I going to do to, to uh, have something to do at that contest? Well, I decided I was gonna try to do Minnie Pearl. <laughs> well, I did, and never dreamed of it going like it did. It, I think I visited about every church, every uh, senior citizen organization, whatever going. I went to to uh, the state uh, convention for church women. I did it there a couple of times. One time in Charlotte at the national meeting. And so I just, uh, a lady today came to me and said, you know, I remember many Pearl, you many pearls so much. Said you always did such a good of it. I made my own outfit. and. It looked just about like she wore, and I had my hat <laughs> with the flowers on it, and I wear, wore a pair of shoes that looked the best, just about like what she wore. Did you have, have a price, price tag? tag. Yeah, had the price, price tag. tag. Yeah. Sure did. <laughs> and so I've still got a couple of those dresses, I think, of, uh, but I don't think I will try to do it anymore. But I was, <laughs> it was the most fun, mm -hmm. and you know, there's people could not remember my first name, but I would say, hey there, Minnie Pearl. It's many, many times that they could not remember my name, but they always remember that I uh, imitated in the pearl. And that was really one of the joys of my life, really, was, was doing that. But there's a picture in the book here that, uh, of one of the occasions that I did. I think that might have been at some, one of our homes there. It looks like it might be, but I'm not sure if that might have been one I did at the Grange, though when I was in there, because I think I did it a couple of times there. But I don't know anyone that's had much more of a wonderful life than I have had. And uh, I always thought when I, when I was growing up, I wanted to be involved with people. And 
I started off with being the magazine chairman and PTA, and I went. That's when I started really doing things, and I went up to president and president of the PTA, president at the at the uh, museum, and an extension, and served many terms there and church as well. So I feel like I have had a real full life, and I think that's what the lot helps you keep going is to think about all those good times you had of working with people and having had the opportunity because I always wanted to travel but I thought that will never happen because I can't afford it but many many times I was elected as delegates from the organization my expenses were paid so my wish came true that I was be able to get to do those many things so my life has been full of joy even though there's been a lot of sorrow at times that's great Yes, I'm through. I was just going to show this is <coughs> uh, Archie, me, and Barbara, and Joyce, and then there's others of, of our anniversary pictures that you can see in here. And then when I celebrated my 90th birthday, this was one of the greatest surprises I guess I ever had, even though we had a big party for me then. I think it's about 130 some, and it was uh, to be delayed because of the weather, and I received a it was 135 birthday cards uh, from that party and when I belonged to an exercise group well one morning I thought I decided well I don't know what I'll go in and Barbara Call said you're going to exercise this morning I said well I don't know if I am or not I said oh come on and go I'll take you out there <laughs> not thinking a thing in the world we got out there and she said go on in I'm gonna make a telephone call well when I got to the door going in there were picked I don't know how many standing around with cameras and here they put a crown on my head <laughs> and one of those big boys around my neck and uh, I think it surprised a lot of them there they didn't know it was going to be so this was in the the uh, paper they put out in the uh, from the senior citizen uh, there and you can see the, what I was wearing and that's a picture there and they had refreshments and all made there making pictures then uh, a little bit later they wanted a picture of me because we started off with a dance group with square dancing and finally most of the men died off and we didn't have any partners so we went into doing exercise. So we had a shirt that said Happy Swingers on the back of it and I still own my shirt and that was along in a neighborhood of nearly 1980 and now I'm the only original person in that group and the Happy Swingers is what we did. That's enough. Let's go on. <laughs> Sounds like you had a great life. Uh, I have. I have. Well, we got married in uh, 1941. I finished high school in April, and <clears throat> then we got married in June, and. Then the war broke out in December, and we lived in the house with his parents off and on for five years. Who was he? Huh? Who was he? Oh, he was Ralph Russ. Ralph Russ, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I worked in the mill some after that, <clears throat> and then after we had our first child, which was Mildred, and then Tracy came along, and after he came along, I didn't work in the mill anymore. I stayed at home for about 13 years, and we wound up with <clears throat> six living children. We had one that was born dead, but um, anyway, we we had a good life, and we were married 57 years when he died, and uh, we had lived in that little old house for I don't know how many years and then Ralph come in from work one evening and he said I'm going out here and lay off the house we've got to have a bigger house I said how in the world are you going to pay for it he said I don't know but we will somehow so I got a picture of, of it it wasn't completed but it was pretty well I had some other pictures too. But anyway, he started, laid that off in June, first weekend in June. 
and we moved in the first weekend in November. We didn't have anything hard to put in that house, but it is overloaded now. A lot of it, sometimes the kids brought in stuff. Well, Ralph being our carpenter, did he do most of the work? Yes, him and his brother Bill okay. built that house. Okay. And me and him would go over there at night and work I would, and he'd fill the sheetrock things, and I would sand it down the next day. Then Mildred took care of the, the little ones in the little house, and it was right up against the porch that we were building. Mm -hmm. So they wasn't over there by themselves. But uh, anyway, I was really proud of that house because I had never lived in anything that looked good, but just a, just a house. So. But we wound up with four boys and two girls, and I'm proud of every one of them. And uh, let's see. And this was the picture that was made when Tracy got married the first time out at Popper Tent Church. And then this, oh, let's see, this one here. This one was made when Tracy was in the service. He came home one weekend and this picture was made and I had it enlarged. And then the years went by, we we got around to our 50th anniversary. We really didn't want one, but the children said, yeah, we, we weren't gonna have one. So this is the grandchildren that was there. All right. All right. And good. so then he's been gone 12 years. 12 years. And it's been a long, lonesome life. That's it. But you have many friends come see you, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I will admit, I do. Hugh Jr. and uh, Ann, Ann Plutz, and then it's Alan, and uh, it, there's a, all of us, and then here's a picture, which I think I showed you there, mm -hmm. with the, uh, the wedding, when Ann got married. And there's an outdoor wedding. Mm -hmm. You got out of high school. Why did you do? high school, went to work, uh, worked in one of the I remember she worked I in the Hoosier Mill some. It was very short, about mm -hmm. maybe two months. And that was she it. didn't sleep like oh, your hands, hands. Your hands broke out or something, wasn't it? I, I believe you went to college too, didn't you? I, well, I, right. took, I took it three years. Worked for the insurance company. Yeah, I knew that. But yeah. I was saying that, yes, I, it took three years to finish. So you worked for the insurance company for a few years? Oh, yes. <laughs> it has been a lot of years. And, yet, and I'm still back and forth there. And so it's a long time. Right. Betty, here's a picture of you. He worked at York Walters Hardware. They yeah. had their uh, secretary was up the stairs and they had a string uh, that they pulled. They had a pulley system. Uh -huh. They sent the money up there and the change, they had to send it back. But he worked there till uh, they sold the store, I think it was. And so I don't know whether he decided to get out or whether they asked him, which was it, Betty? He left. They, he couldn't hardly tolerate the way that was being run from their own out in. It didn't work. They didn't They didn't get in with it. But he was uh, there for how long? It was a long time. 42. 40, he told me 42, 42 years. 42 but years. Somebody else said it was 44. So he, well, he started he that job there. soon after y'all got married or before? Uh, he, was, he was before. He was before. He was before. I didn't meet him uh, then. It was after he was in the, in the hardware. How did you meet him? Your husband introduced me. <laughs> was it love at first sight? Um, I don't know. I've heard it wasn't. <laughs> no, not really because he wanted, he he would call me and all this stuff and I didn't, I really, 
I didn't, wasn't interested, none at all. <laughs> and finally, after the third time, uh, he decided that he was, he, if I didn't go out with him the third time, forget it. <laughs> so I had already made up my mind, I would get, go that third time, and, and I would, just to get rid of him. <laughs> I didn't have to, I was not going, uh, well anyway, it turned out to be a great, turned out to be 60 years. Yes. 60 years. Mm -hmm. I think it's wonderful. Yep. I was hoping we would make 60, but we, our well, you did, did seven. You? I thought you had 60. No. Well, I thought it was all for the best. And every youngin in the family felt as nobody like Hugh Clutz because he'd get in the back in the barnyard and play ball with them or whatever and they just have a spell, there comes Uncle Hugh, there comes Uncle Hugh and they ready to run out and he brought the ball and the bat and he, uh, in the back, in the trunk of the car, I think, didn't it, Betty? Oh, yeah. Well, now, let's just, I think I remember something about the house that you live in was built on a ball field? It's cross, Watts Crossroads. Watts Crossroads. It's, uh, ball yeah. field? Yeah, it's a ball field right down below, the, mm -hmm. just past the house, like uh, behind the house. And uh, that was, I, when I can see that ball field and see us. I would be sitting out there watching the, their play. So it was a good place. Watts Crossroads was a good place to live. And y'all made a few trips too, didn't you? Uh-huh. Traveled yeah. a good bit. Right. Been everywhere just about. We have been a lot. We did. I mean, I, it was, we were very fortunate to be able to do it. Go into to Alaska and when we went through the inside passage. I always <laughs> wanted to travel, and so that's that's what we would do, and that's what we did for I don't know how many years that we started about around 1980. Mm -hmm. Went to a lot of places. You all had ponies at one time, too. Yes, we did. We had ponies, and I'll never forget Buddy. He was the one that was going to get on that pony, and he was scared to death. But the pony was... <laughs> I didn't didn't want to stop and Buddy was having a conniption. <laughs> it was funny. Couldn't find the brakes. <laughs> uh, that's right. That's exactly right. But Hugh went to uh Phyllis Phyllis Sweeta. Oh, uh, can you see it? Uh, in in uh, South America. He had the opportunity to and was with with the hardware. Mm -hmm. So that was he was, I was glad that he could do that. Anyway. Tell him what yeah. Buddy done. What did he do? He what did he get of yours and do with it? Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> about that. We got a picture of that. He was he was being funny. He put my girl on <laughs> and stood up on the uh, he stood up on the commode. Yeah, that's where the picture was. And, well, and I happened to see him and made a picture. Anyway. <laughs> well, we'll have to have the picture in the video. Oh, yeah. I'll but but he will appreciate that. Yep. Uh, yes, yes. We, we really had a good, t well, kids like doing things yeah. too. So. Anyway, it was funny. Tell them about the hat and the commode. Louise, said, Hugh's sister Louise came. They, were, they came up, and it was, I, think, I don't remember what it was, it, it was happening at Boger. And Church. so, yeah, Boger Church. And uh, um, anyway, you're supposed to wear hats then. Well, Ann got a hold of the hats and she stuck them in a commode. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she... At the church? No, I mean, at, at, at the home. house. Oh, your hat. Yeah, so and it was on e at Easter, so I had okay. to go find a hat. <laughs> oh, you didn't have a hat. <laughs> yes. I remember her doing that. Oh, I, I remember. How old was she then when she done that? She wasn't very old, but she, she really crammed those things. Was <laughs> <laughs> it more than one? Was it more than one? Well, no, you uh, can tell us that. Uh, it was uh, just one, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. I don't recall about that, but I do got Buddy, though. Oh. I don't know. So and Alan, Ann doesn't like hats. And Alan, <laughs> and this was not planned, but got his hand caught in the grinder. Uh, corn, shower. corn shower. Corn mm -hmm. shower. That was in 73. And that was the day that his, he was coming home from Venezuela. And, uh, and it, 
happened in that day and it took off part of his thing, his thumb. So, yeah, That's Martin. when Mama died and I was in the hospital. Yes. And he was on children's ward, I guess. Mm -hmm. So there was two of us in the hospital at the time Mama died. Yes. I guess one of the things that I that I really enjoy and still do is music. But, uh, so you still it. play? Yeah. yeah. This is such a good picture of whether you saw it when you're looking through me or not of Betty at the piano. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very, very good. And yeah, we're going to use that one. And she directs a little children's uh, choir at church. Huh? You know, little sweethearts. <laughs> Me that, or, or are you going to use that in the film? Margie, <laughs> it is you. I'm say, like, V, have no. time, Margie, have I know, time. That's the reason I said that. You can do either way you want to. And that's I'm not going to. Why do they call you V? That's a good question. From Virginia. From Virginia? For Virginia. That For was the Virgi name. Oh. Margie, I, Virginia. Margie. I'll tell you Virginia. how that come about. Tell me. Well, Betty Hutton was going to be a teacher. Last child, and there was only one boy. My daddy wanted the, a boy so bad. Well, she turned out to be a girl, and his initial was MV, so they named her Margie Virginia. And then she started off with, with saying her MV. Well, uh, she, Betty was small, and she couldn't uh, get all of that out, and she just got started saying her V and Vicky. And she got Vicky from a lot of people, I think, after yeah. that. And, with, and so that's how she come to get be called by an initial. <laughs> Well, I didn't know, know that how, was your middle name. I'm glad to know how I got uh, got here and how I was named. <laughs> you, did you not know it? I heard you tell it. Or she liked, She was really our tomboy, wasn't she? Well, sure, I had to be because that's what Daddy planned it for, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah right. that's what Daddy and he he. Um, I guess you'd say he made me a barber, more or less to say, because he he. Showed me how, and I used his um, razor. He had a straight razor and the clippers, clippers, hand clippers. It was not electric. I still got those and the other and the straight razor. They wanted the sides to come off of it, and he took a piece of leather and made a side on it. And I think I still got that. So it's up itself through the years, and I, I've got two a three pair of electric clippers and little things that go with cutting hair, trimming around the ears, and in the ears, in the nose, and all that stuff that I've <laughs> used over the years. And Hugh, he'd call and he'd say, Betty says, she thinks I need a haircut. He didn't say he needed one. He said, Betty says, I need a haircut. <laughs> I wouldn't blame for everything. <laughs> he didn't want to ask. So he he enjoyed getting his hair cut, and it ended up I was shaved him something. So I did that, and I guess we I definitely shaved trust him. you then, didn't he? Yeah, and my daddy, I guess I shaved him. In, you know, the last one he was buried. Yeah. But uh, and you cut his toenails. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, I cut Lee's hair one time, I think, and I guess he didn't like it. He didn't ever ask me again. <laughs> no, you had to sit too long. You used to cut right. No, he had, didn't have patience to just have the rest of them. They just couldn't sit on that stool that long. <laughs> About two hours. Two hours? Hugh, well, a lot of mischievous things we used to do. I know uh, uh, the time that uh, Hugh's, Betty's husband's sister, Louise Putz Neal, uh, she and I was the little little devils, I guess you'd say, mm -hmm. pranksters. And uh, I know one time we were in the in the car with them, and we decided we were going to stay in the car and talk. 
they went on in the house. Well, we were sitting there talking. All of a sudden, we could see something moving around in the yard. We didn't know what it was or who it was. Well, it was small. I remember she put something over, but she slipped all the way around the car. Times we couldn't see her. We got right up against the head of face right up against the head. Just to look, look at us. Boy, we was about to go out of that top of that car. Didn't he, she have something over her I head? I think she did. Yes, she did. Uh, she, she, was scared a, the, the, she was a ghost. She scared the de-wheats out of us, and we said we won't never sit in the car again. She, I think she was trying to put it that way. <laughs> she, Mama was bright much for clowns. She, she always, always was. was. I always am for everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. But, um, oh, I don't know. There's so, so many things it's hard to remember. What about Did you and Buck? Did you ever get married? No, we just... You never got married. <laughs> we just got hooked. We just got hooked. You got hooked. Yeah, you've heard Did that. Did you get too. hooked or was it him that got hooked? He's the one got me and I got hooked. <laughs> oh, no, let's see. I don't know. I think I know I did. I met him on a blind blind date, which was Billy Williams right now. A cousin of ours that introduced him to me. He had told her, he said, Billy, I've run out of women who date. said, you know of anybody that I might date? She said, yeah, I got a cousin that would. Well, let me know. Take me or show me how to get there. Anyway, we've been married 57 years with two wonderful two ch children with uh, five grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren. And we love them all. And, and uh, of course, you know, we joy. Uh, didn't know that there was anything you know, going on within, within her body uh, as far as handicap when she was born. But little by little, we, we learned that she couldn't crawl and she couldn't walk like one at that age. But anyway, she ended up, uh, as you know, a mild handicap, which is uh, mild cerebral palsy. But uh, she, and she's, uh, Got a lot of friends and knows a lot of people. A lot of people knows her, and and uh, she's just a joy to be a joy. She was born in December on the seventeenth of '59, and I don't think we could have named her any other better name for the uh, personality she's got. She's truly a joy. So when I told her that today, I said, "Now I'm going." I said, "Now you're on your honor system for yourself, and you and look after your daddy." I'll take care of him. <laughs> She's a sweetheart. And when, whenever he can't see something and put his hand on her or understand something, she'll say, Daddy, let me do it. I'll get it. Okay. She does, too. She she knows how to handle it and take care of it. But, uh, yes, uh, when we got married, which was May the 10th, 1953, that was Mother's Day at that year. Of course, Buddy was born March the 27th. Mm -hmm. And wasn't sure really whether Biddy and she was going to get to come to the wedding. But they did. But I think Ralph did the corporate. He he drove the car and headed out there waiting on us, wasn't it, when we come mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. I think. Oh, yeah, he <laughs> got you girls all hooked up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, of course, we... Uh, we had our wedding dinner at that uh, Mama Daddy's at the house, and the pictures made at the well house, which I have some of those there. And and in school, uh, we did quite a number of things, and being in uh, F F H A Future Homemakers uh, of America, but that's what it's called. And I've got some pictures of that, and pictures of one. Um, I don't have it in here, but I've got it over there. One that, that was took in Florida, was that 1950, I think, down in Florida. Yeah, but this I is, yeah, but it, it went out several years, close around after we graduated. And this is one of me, but I do not know how old I was when that was took. I was in school. And I think between Betty's hair and my hair, we had the style of the day. <laughs> we look back at it now and I think, 
smile and we thought we were cute. <laughs> but we were at that time, yes. Here's one with me sitting on the ice cream freezer in the yard with Lee turned in the ice cream freezer. And I can see Mama on one corner and Archie sitting on another corner. Archie was usually where a camera was, Archie was pretty well going right to be in the midst of it at the first <laughs> Yeah. Pretty and cute. I I'm not sure if Betty had one like this one. Um, myself and her on the uh, I have one like that. Of uh, the uh, where the flowers sit mm -hmm. that Lee and them were sitting on earlier. Yeah. I think Daddy made that. He did. And that was right and you see the front part of the old home place. There. Uh, this was an old fifty something Chevrolet truck, I believe it was at Buckhead. Snow on the ground. Of course we were out uh Playing in the snow, and I'll never forget. After Daddy died, well, we told Mama that she could come and stay with us. But in the meantime, before he died, uh, they would come over there and stay, especially if it was bad weather. And Daddy would bring her over there in the car, turn around and take that car back and put it in the car shed, and walk back over there. He didn't leave that car outside, no. But Anyway, uh, but he liked to take an old dust sack and wipe the dust off of it. And, really? Yeah, he liked to take care of that. And I'll never forget, even after Daddy died, that uh, Buck still got his snow sled that he had. His mother kept it for him when he was a little boy, and it's still good shape. And we took Buck and Joy, myself and Buck and Mama, and their kids always called her grandmother, and you know, it's light nights when it snows, and it just looks like you can get out there and without, walk without a flashlight. Wasn't all that much traffic. That's when Martha lived down um, the safer road there from us. And we would take them and pull them on the sled and go down there, or on, further on back to the safer's house. Come back up, we enjoyed that. And I know one time Bob Reimer, which was, uh, our boy about our age. Friend of the family, I yes, might say almost like their child, almost raising. But anyway, uh, Betty and I was home, and if we wanted anything done mischievous or want to go to the store or wanted some help with something or that we needed to, we had to do our chores, you know, at home. Bob, come on and help us. And if we want to go to the movie, Bob, will you take us to the movie? Yes. Bob, we need something to drink. Go take us to the store. Teach us how to drive a car. I think he was the one who was instigating that time that you rode in the, drove in the side of Evelyn and Ralph's house in the kitchen. Was me. And I bet they felt the joke when they were there. I don't think they were. It wasn't that so hard. No. Well, no, I didn't know how hard it was, but I remember I bang didn't. right against there. Uh, and I, I remember whenever I got out of school, went to work at uh, Hoser Mill, I rode to work with Ralph, and he's the one that uh, went with me up town. That was when you got your um, driver's permit. You had to have a driver's permit, but you didn't have to go through all these rituals like you do today. Are you to go in there and say you want to buy a piece of paper <laughs> for uh, uh, learn to drive? And then whenever it come time to get my driver's license, I think he went with me then. We did uh, some trips, Buck and I together. Uh, we went on two trips where we didn't have Joy with us and Betty and Hugh kept Joy and the first time we ever went on a trip and I was planning to go on a trip, that child cried and cried, didn't she? Oh God. Yeah, we managed. I know, but she did and over a period of time as we little by little would do things, we tried to tell her, no, we don't, we don't want to be in, you know, every time you go, we'll leave you or take you or somebody else can. But we'll be back. We wanted to let you know we will be back. And gosh, to this day, she'll say, take Daddy with you to the beauty shop. I can get in. I know how to get in. <laughs> she wants to do it herself. She really likes to be She wants to be independent. independent. And if you want something secure, tell her or give it to her. It's closed doors because she won't tell nobody. I'll tell her I have to pick it out of her to get it. Anyway, uh, 
Uh, we've been married 57 years, and we just hope we got 57 more heads. <laughs> Maybe not here, but down up yonder, not down yonder. Absolutely. Well, we've always shared. Yep, we do. We and just share, our, share our leftovers to each other. It's not leftovers now, it's plant overs. Yeah. Now, we share our bad things along with our good, too. That's when what, something happened to one, we're all there. That's what makes it a family. Yeah. Even if we do lose something once in a while. <laughs> we find it though, don't we? Yeah. Well, I'm just glad that we finally got around to doing this. Uh, let y'all get together and tell the story of the Sykes family. And uh, Well, we appreciate you doing that. That's you my didn't pleasure. know what you were getting into. <laughs> oh, I've, I've done a few of these before. I enjoyed it. But I bet you never had such a harmonious bunch as this. Harmonious? No, no never as harmonious. <laughs> <laughs>